Okay, so in this video, we're gonna have a look at graph transformations. Now, if you wanna have a go at this video, feel free to pause it and have a go, but otherwise, I'm just gonna show you where you can find more of these types of questions and more explanations on this topic right within the video. So when you're on one of these videos, if you click into the description, you'll see that I've got everything listed within there. I've got hard questions to try, I've got checklists and practice papers that you can download, and other questions and other videos within this series. Now if you scroll down to the bottom of the description, you'll see down there it says topics featured in this video. So in there I'll put all the links with difficult questions and topic videos related to this topic right there for you to access. So just click onto one of those and it'll take you on to more practice questions and different mm -hmm. versions of this topic. So, with that being said, let's get started. Okay, so looking at this question. It says the graph of the curve with equation, and it gives us y equals f of x, is shown on the grid. It says on the grid, sketch the graph of the curve with equation y equals f of negative x. Now in order to tackle this, you need to know some of the rules for what's happening either inside or outside the bracket. So when something's happening inside the bracket, normally it does the opposite of what we'd expect. So for example, something like y equals f of x plus two, we would expect that to add two to all the x values, but actually it does the opposite, which actually takes away two from the x values. And if you subtract two from the x values, it actually translates it to the left. So an x plus two in the bracket moves the graph to the left. And likewise, the opposite of that, if we were to instead change that to negative two, so x minus two, that would actually move the graph to the right. Now, as well as that, we can put a plus or minus outside the bracket. So we could have y equals f of, and then x, and we could have something like plus 3. Now, that changes the y coordinate. So if it's outside the bracket, it changes y, but it does what we'd expect. So plus 3 would move it up by 3. But likewise, if we were to change that to minus 3 at the end, that would move it down by 3. You also have multiplications that you can have. So you can have something like y equals f of, and in brackets we could have 2x. And that actually does the opposite. So rather than timesing the x values by 2, it divides the x values by 2. And you can have on the outside, you can have y equals 2f of x. And that multiplies the y values by 2. But that does do what we'd expect as it's outside the bracket. So we have these scenarios going on where if something is inside the bracket it does the opposite of what we'd expect and changes the x coordinates and if it's outside the bracket it does what we'd expect but it changes the y coordinates and again you can find more information on that in the video in the description. But this one here it's a negative and it's inside the bracket. So when we have a negative involved so just what we have here y equals f of minus x it's a bit of a strange one, because what we'd expect that to do is make all the x values be negative, or at least change the sign. So any negative x values would become positive, and any positive x values would become negative. But this is the unique scenario where it does actually do what we'd expect. The opposite of changing the signs would just be this for the signs to stay the same. So just putting minus x there, the opposite of that, if we were to think of it like that, would do absolutely nothing. But a negative in the bracket does do something. It does change the signs of the x-coordinates. So if we find the x-coordinates on the graph, and we're looking for those exact positions where it crosses through a whole number coordinate, so if we look, I can see 3, uh, 1, 2, 3. And to be fair, there are a few more. You've got this one just in the middle of the curve, and you have got the origin there. So technically, we do have five, but there are three key points that I'd want to look at, those peaks uh, of the curves. So the one on the origin, that's a zero. So that's just going to stay the same. So that will stay where it is. And if we swap colors for the ones that we're going to move, the one that we have on negative one is going to become positive one. So that would go just here. The one that we have on negative two becomes positive two. So that would go there on the negative three, that would go over to positive three. Notice how it's not going up or down, it's just going, uh, it's just changing the x coordinate. 
and then our final one on negative 4 would become positive 4, so that would go just over there. So if we draw this in, you can hopefully see what's happened. You've got a curve going up, coming down, and then going back up again. So what's actually happened there in terms of a translation or a transformation? Well, it's not been translated, but it has been reflected. So this particular transformation, in terms of a graph transformation, reflects it in the y-axis. And you can also have a different version of this. You can have y equals minus f of x. And that particular transformation reflects it in the x-axis, because that changes the signs of the y-coordinates. So for this graph transformation here, it's nice and easy. Obviously, there's lots of different ones that can come up, but that just does a reflection in the y-axis. So I hope you found that useful and helpful. Obviously, check out the video in the description to check out some more of these, but otherwise, I'll see you for the next one.